I'm Heather from Heather Handmade and I love to sew. I'm so excited to be here and share some great tips about sewing patterns with you. I have been sewing for most of my life and I sew everything from clothing, quilts, bags, home decor, all of it. I just love being at a sewing machine and sewing. One of my favorite things to do is to create PDF sewing patterns it's easier for me to share patterns with beginner sewists. Let me know what was your worst sewing fail. I have plenty. I make mistakes all the time. What is a PDF sewing pattern? Normally when people think of sewing patterns, they think of sewing patterns like you buy it in an envelope at the fabric store and it's a tissue paper pattern and there's lots of sizes. Um, you cut out the pattern on like that big tissue paper well, a PDF pattern is a digital format of a pattern. It's like a traditional um, paper sewing pattern that you buy at the store in terms of like you cut out the paper and you pin it on your fabric and you cut out your fabric. But instead of buying it in an envelope on paper, you actually buy a digital version, a PDF version online, download it to your computer, print it off, and tape it together and then you have your own version of the pattern. You always have a digital copy so you can always reprint it. If you need multiple sizes then you always have access to that because you don't ever lose the original digital copy. So today I'm going to teach you how to use a PDF pattern, how to print it so it's the correct size. That's very, that's the biggest hang up people get when using PDF patterns. I'm going to teach you how to assemble it and put it together. So let's get started. So um, I'm going to be working on a free tote bag. This is a pattern I have. Um, I have opened it in two different places so I can show you the difference. So here, this is in Adobe Acrobat Reader. It has opened it up. Um, you can see the pattern here. You can scroll down and see all of the pages. My patterns are designed to work with both um, A4 paper sizes and letter paper sizes. So you can use what works for you, but you should make sure um, that the designer, like figure out what size pattern that they design for so that you can um, print on the right size, spe specifically if they design only for one style of paper. So you go over here and you're going to click print. These options will always, always be different, but the most important thing is that you get 100%. Um, you can click actual size and that should make it be 100%. Um, do not shrink and do not fit. You want it to be the exact size that the designer um, designed. So usually I don't even pick actual size. I almost always pick custom scale and 100% because then I am in control of it. Um, you can do auto, which in this one you can see that it kind of puts it in the center of the paper or you can do portrait, which puts it on the edge. It means that a little bit of this edge will not print, but it makes it much easier for um, putting to the pattern together in the end. So that is up to you. Um, sometimes um, you can't choose this or you choose centering. It's like a different wording every time. So check that before um, you, know, you print it off. So that from here, from Adobe, it makes it a little easier because you can see everything and you have all of your choices. Then you would click print and it would print out. So let's say this is a web browser and I've made it full size so you can see everything. So you see here are my pages on the side and this is the papers you can see right here. So if we click print from here, it comes up a little differently. So as you can see here, um, you have way less options and it's like, well, how am I going to get this to be correct when it looks like this? So I go to more settings and then you can click letter or A4 here. Um, none of this matters when it comes to scale. You can do default, which would be the actual size, or custom. I always do custom 100% because I just like to be in control and I know what it's doing um, and then I won't have any problems. 
You can see here with these options and up here, I do not have a choice of doing portrait or landscape or auto. So this is going to print off on the side here on the left and up at the top. I have no control in this print dialog with to change that. So if that bothers you, then you will you should use a different print. Like you have to open it in a different program to be able to control that and then I would click print. Now um, before you use your pattern you need to check the size. There is a measured um, box on the pattern that will be a certain size and it will tell you like this is one inch by one inch. It might be in centimeters, it might be bigger, that you need to measure to see if the pattern printed correctly. If you're really worried about the pattern, you can print just one paper and check it before you print everything else so you don't print out everything incorrectly. So I'm going to put my ruler here and I'm going to measure. Now as you can see that is a perfect fit so that means this pattern, um, the way it was designed is accurate to that size and it printed out accurately and the right size. So um, there are different ways to connect your pattern. You can use um, scotch tape. I really like using scotch tape. I have a little tape dispenser to make it faster to grab a piece of tape. A lot of people really like using just a glue stick and you can glue it together. If your pattern printed out on the edge like this as I was showing you on the computer, that means that I don't need to trim every anything off. This pattern is already on the edge and I can um, put it onto, like I can attach it to the next paper without trimming everything off. If your pattern printed in the center of your paper, you do need to trim off two sides before you can um, assemble the pattern. So you can see if I put this together right here, this is a, there's a black line on each paper. So I'm matching up that black line. There is also a pale diamond here that should line up and it actually is lining up. So that means that this is correctly touching each other in the right place and I can tape it together. I prefer using tape over glue, but that's just a personal preference. So I'm going to tape that together and make sure if you have any pattern pieces that are crossing this um, line, like this separate pieces, that you tape those together because those are the pieces that are the most important to stick together. It doesn't worry about, it doesn't matter if the other part that is going to be cut off, it doesn't matter if that's taped because you are going to be cutting it off. So you assemble the rest of the pattern just like this. Once the whole pattern is assembled, depending on how many pieces of paper there are, I have seen, you know, just two pieces of paper that need to be taped together up to like 40 pieces of paper. So once it is all taped together, you can actually cut out the pattern pieces. This pattern is now ready to be used. Um, use the pattern instructions to sew up the pattern. And that's how you use PDF sewing patterns. I hope you learned something new. This is actually a tote bag pattern. There is a free version you can get on my blog. You can find the link below. I share a new free PDF sewing pattern almost every week on my blog. I would love to see what you make with them. You can find me at heatherhandmade.com to find all of my free sewing patterns and all of the sewing creations that I make.